Most people still believe that only rats and mice are used in research. The fact is that hundreds of thousands of dogs and cats are used in the U.S. each year, along with thousands of monkeys and apes, farm animals, rabbits, and turtles. The numbers of frogs, birds, and mice run into the millions. Where do these animals come from? Most people are totally unaware of the fact that most of the dogs and cats used in research come from our very own public pounds and animal shelters. Incredibly, these tax-supported facilities not only release people's pets to laboratories, but they also subsidize research by selling them at extremely low prices. If you ever lose your pet, make sure that you check all pounds in your area daily so you can claim your dog or cat immediately and thus prevent the pound from selling your pet to a lab. This shameful practice, known as pound seizure, is perfectly legal in most states in the U.S. Only a handful of states has been able to make it illegal through the passage of hard-fought legislation. In those states, the shelters have reverted to their intended function, a haven for lost and abandoned animals. Unfortunately, in most states, shelters remain inexhaustible sources of cheap laboratory animals. Even some zoos are involved. In 1982, the Detroit Zoo released at least 21 crab-eating macaque monkeys to Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri to be used in terminal experiments. Many other zoos routinely advertise in the Primate Supply Information Clearinghouse, a publication which caters to animal research facilities. In the June 3, 1985 issue, the Los Angeles Zoo advertised 21 primates for sale. Other zoos which have advertised animals for sale are San Diego, Fort Worth, Dallas, Utica, Santa Barbara, Louisiana Purchase, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Norfolk, Oakland, Colorado Springs, Denver, San Antonio, Bronx, Toledo, Seattle, and many more. But this is not all. In Los Angeles, the University of Southern California has been trying to get approval from the city of Los Angeles to build a facility at the Los Angeles Zoo, which would house research primates. In other words, the university would be conducting animal research at the zoo as well. The second source is the purpose-bred animal. More than 1,600 animal breeders in the U.S. offer all kinds of animals, from mice and rats to primates. These are animals who are bred just to be used as laboratory tools. In many instances, animals are bred with built-in diseases and offered to customers with surgical modifications. This simply means that some animals have undergone as many as 17 operations by the time they are sold to a research facility. This is simply a huge business. The largest and best known is the multinational Charles River Breeding Laboratories Incorporated of Wilmington, Massachusetts, one of the fastest growing stocks over the past few years. The company's 1984 net sales were over $40 million. Recently, Charles River was acquired by Bosch and Loam Company of Rochester, New York, best known for its line of contact lenses. For just $135 million, Bosch and Loam purchased a biological assembly line which produces more than 22 million animals a year in plants in seven nations. The new anti-vivisectionist movement is not against research. It is against animal research. But its opposition is not only on self-evident moral grounds, but on medical and scientific grounds. Animal research is not science, and therefore its practice constitutes scientific fraud. The fraud of animal research can be easily demonstrated with two clear facts. Number one, the research animals are not human beings. And number two, the animals are always healthy before the experiments. 
Since animals are not human beings, their problems are obviously different from ours. Their bodies are different, they suffer from different diseases, and their reactions to drugs are also different. Besides, the fact that the animal is healthy before the experiment means that disease and or trauma has to be given by violent and artificial means, which can never be the same as the disease which develops spontaneously in a human being. Clearly, the results obtained from artificially diseased animals can never be extrapolated to human beings. Therefore, it is not a question of whether or to what degree animal research works. The point is that animal research cannot work simply because the premise on which it is based is false. He is the author of Slaughter of the Innocent, the author of Naked Empress. He has come all the way from Switzerland to be here for our rally today. Hans Rouge is an international giant in our movement, and I want you to welcome Mr. Hans Rusch. The main point is that we must attack vivisection on medical grounds and forget the ethical grounds. Why? You know that the ethical considerations like when you say when you, you speak of the sanctity of life or of animals have rights this is perfectly right but these slogans will always be outshouted by the sleazy slogans of our adversaries who say babies or dogs babies or dogs and this slogan has finally conditioned the medical thinking of our whole nations of yours and mine well the reason why i'm against animal research <coughs> is because it doesn't work it has no scientific value one cannot extrapolate the results of animal research to human beings and every good scientist knows that doctors themselves will admit that animal experimentation is no good for example, if you say to the doctors, well, these experiments in animals show that this drug is dangerous. It can cause cancer. It can cause all kinds of side effects. The doctors will say, oh, that's just animal experimentation. You can't extrapolate that to human beings. They themselves admit that it's no good. As, as far as I'm concerned, since animal experiments have no validity, and since they lead to quackery inside of medicine, I have to be opposed to quackery, and therefore I have to be opposed to animal experiments as a scientist, regardless of what my moral feelings are about animals. It is estimated that in the U.S. alone, some 20 million animals are used every year just to test drugs, including analgesics, cosmetics, household products of all kinds, and substances used in industry and agriculture, such as pesticides. The LD50, or lethal dose 50%, we are seeing here, is an acute toxicity test in which a number of animals are given different amounts of a substance to determine what dose will kill 50% of them over a predetermined period of time. The test is principally used to give a rough indication of the toxicity of a substance or new drug when this is unknown. The force feeding of huge quantities of substances, which can include bleach, oven cleaners, and toothpaste, may cause the animal's stomach to rupture or may kill the animal through the physical damage to his system. This has nothing to do with the actual toxicity of the substance. It shouldn't be difficult for any sane person watching this pathetic scene to understand that this test is not only an intolerable atrocity, a leftover from the darkest of ages, but also a scientific fraud since the information cannot be extrapolated to other animals, let alone to man.